Okay. <clears throat> um, now, um, so what is this course um, all about? So if I were to focus on like, what are the actual problems, types of problems that we're going to be dealing with um, in this class? Um, everything revolves around um, two, uh, in this class, revolves around two uh, fundamental problems um, that one could actually spend quite a bit of time on, and we will. Um, okay, so systems of linear equations, um, and here such a system of equations is, is written out in full, but uh, we refer to this as AX equals B, um, where A is a matrix, um, X is a uh, vector of your uh, unknowns, uh, so the solution to the system, um, and uh, B is a vector of uh, right-hand side values. So for instance, the 10 and the 16 down here, the uh, values multiplying X1 and X2, so 1, 4, 2, 7, those would be the entries of the matrix A. The vector X would consist of the unknowns X1 um, and X2. Um, now, there are different cases we'll look at. In some, like uh, in most cases, A would be a square matrix, so same number of rows and columns, or same number of equations and unknowns, but not necessarily. In fact, even today, we will see some cases uh, where those numbers differ. Um, so that's so. Concepts related in some way to this problem take up much of a semester. And then uh, another problem would be, that will focus on more towards the end, is the uh, eigenvalue problem. Um, A times X equals lambda times X, where um, Where X is required to be a non-zero vector, lambda. So the unknowns are X and lambda. Lambda is a number; uh, could be a real or complex number um, called an eigenvalue, and X is called an eigenvector. So, um, so for for this X and lambda, this operation on the left side, which is matrix times vector multiplication, simplifies to the operation of just taking a vector and scaling. It's uh, by a number. Um, suppose uh, so solutions to this problem are of particular interest. Now, um, and the thing is, both of these problems, uh, linear, linear equations and also eigenvalue problems, play a fundamental role in uh, many different areas of mathematics. Uh, for example, uh, 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 differential equations, uh, for one thing. Um, also, uh, you know, data fitting, functional approximation, and so forth. Uh, many areas of uh, computational um, mathematics. Um, so it's important to not just see these problems as being in a vacuum. I mean, one could, you know, we're, we're going to go very in depth into these problems. Um, and then there, we have another course, Math 426, uh, which, when offered, uh, goes into them even further. Um, but it has been said, I saw this quote somewhere, and I found it to be quite accurate. Um, Mathematics is the art of reducing all problems uh, to linear algebra. Um, and yes, it's a bit tongue in cheek, but it's 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 more in the nose than you might think. Um, there are all kinds of uh, uh, nonlinear equations um, that one needs to solve in important applications, and uh, the way that one goes about those is by uh, um, obtaining an approximate solution of some linear equation. Um, uh, so, so nonlinear problems are often being linearized in some way just to either um, get a handle on solving them or just understanding uh, behavior of a solution. So, so, both so for both uh, quantitative and qualitative uh, purposes. Um, so, so really this class is meant to be part of a foundation um, for work carried out in uh, other classes. Now, um, so the funny thing is that um, this particular class, 
um, Math Free 26, um, I have to confess, I have not taught before, but I've worked with um, linear algebra in so many other settings. Um, for example, that uh, it's actually listed as I, I consider it to be one of my research specialties, or, or more specifically, numerical linear algebra, which is about uh, solving these same linear algebra problems um, uh, by computer, which are very similar to the methods that you're going to be learning uh, to use uh, by hand. Um, so, uh, so other courses that we have in our curriculum, uh, for example, um, Math 460 and 461, the numerical analysis sequence, um, that makes heavy use of uh, linear algebra, certain graduate courses uh, uh, that we have. Um, and, uh, and I found uh, linear algebra to, to play a significant role in things that are taught in Math 280, uh, multivariable calculus. So I'm always using linear algebra when I teach that class, although it's not a prerequisite. So um, it's it's something that knowledge of it is helpful, but uh, but, but uh, cannot be required. Um, so it's actually one of my uh, favorite areas of mathematics. Um, a uh, very quick word about me. Uh, so I'm a um, full professor in the School of Mathematics and Natural Sciences. I'm beginning my 12th year at uh, USM. Um, so I earned my PhD in 2003 in uh, scientific computing and computational mathematics at uh, Stanford University. Um, my uh, advisor was uh, a man by the name of Gene Golub, who wrote uh, one of the most important uh, textbooks on numerical linear algebra called Matrix Computations. Um, and he was uh, considered probably the, arguably the um, foremost uh, researcher in the world on uh, methods for uh, um, numerical linear algebra. So um, so I came at, at linear algebra from a more uh, computational point of view. Um, so my research is really for numerical methods for partial differential equations. Those of you who are math majors may someday take um, math 417, which is uh, offered in the spring. That, uh, Usually covers that topic, um, or I often teach um, 460 and 461, as I mentioned earlier, for numerical um, analysis uh, sequence. But but my research makes heavy use of techniques from numerical linear algebra, since so much of my training is in math. Um, okay, so um, already. So what I'm going to do now is dive into these problems and you'll, you'll see that there are certain uh, bits of terminology that I need to explain, such as elementary row operations, systematic elimination procedure, uh, what does it mean for a system of equations to be consistent. So all of those things I will explain um, as we go. Okay. <clears throat> um, so that uh, by the end of this, that you can be re ready to do the um, uh, first homework. Okay. As I mentioned what I, whatever I type here will be posted um, after class. Okay. Um, so here we have a system of equations to solve where both equations uh, depend on um, the uh, unknowns x1 and x2. Um, and so, it's, so we can't simply um, perform algebraic rearrangements on one of these equations to immediately uh, get a solution. And that's why we need elementary row operations to rewrite the system of equations in an equivalent form. Uh, so the solution is unchanged, but the equations can now um, actually be solved. Um, now, so a couple things that I need to explain. Um, OK, um, so, so there are three elementary row operations. Really, in this case, operations on equations um, that will be performed. Um, so the first is um, interchanging rows or equations. For now, it's easiest to figure in terms of equations because that's what we actually have written here. 
But later, uh, these systems will be written in matrix vector form. So then you'd be interchanging rows of a matrix. But for now, you can think of it in terms of interchanging equations. That's a first elementary row operation, which we actually won't need for this problem, but now and then it will be, it will be needed. Um, scaling a row by a constant factor. So for example, I could take this entire row, both sides of the equation, both sides, and multiply it by two. So I'd have two X one plus eight X two um, is equal to 20. Um, and then the operation that's most useful, replacing a row or equation by itself plus a multiple of another. Um, so those would be manipulations I could perform. For example, I could um, take this second row here and replace it by its sum, uh, the sum of the two equations. So I could get, I could add these together and get 3x1 plus 11x2 is equal to 26 and replace the second equation with that sum. That does not change the system, uh, sorry, does not change the solution of this system of equations. Uh, so those are the manipulations that they perform. Um, so Um, so we're just tr trying to use this to uh, get it, uh, the system into a form that's easier to solve. But certainly knowing what we can do to the system is not enough. We need some guidance. Which operation should we choose um, to perform on this system? What's the purpose? Um, so to that end, okay. So we need to make a system easy to solve. So a question to, to needs to be answered is, uh, what equations actually are uh, easy to solve? Um, and the answer to that is, uh, if the equation involves only one unknown. So for example, um, if I take this highlighted portion here to ignore it, uh, if this is not there, I have instead, 7x2 is equal to 16. Well, that equation I can just go ahead and solve. I can just divide both sides by 7. Um, and I have x2 is equal to 16 over 7. Um, so, but the, so a problem with this system is both equations depend on both unknowns, x1 and x2. Um, so, so, so with the idea in mind of what kind of system we'd like to have, um, so if, 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 for instance, if we could get even one of these equations depending on only one unknown, um, then we're in good shape. So um, So the idea is to reduce the system to what's called upper uh, upper triangular form. Uh, and what do I mean by that? Uh, so once I actually carry it out, you'll see visually what I mean by that. Um, but if I were to describe in words, the last equation in the system depends on only one unknown. So the second equation would depend only on x2. Um, the second to last could depend on two unknowns, third to last on three unknowns. So so the first equation can depend on as many unknowns as you have, it doesn't matter. But each equation below it depends on one less. Um, so we can use what is called back substitution. Um, so we go ahead and solve the last equation for the last unknown, in this case, x2. Then we substitute the known value of x2 into the equation above solve for x1 and so on. So we can do this for how many equations that we have. Um, so this leads to what is called, was referred to in the problem as the systematic elimination procedure, which is also known as 
Gaussian elimination, which is a curious name because Carl Frederick Gauss was one of the most uh, prolific mathematicians of all time. There are great many uh, mathematical entities named after him, um, but he actually had nothing to do with the invention of this systematic elimination procedure. Um, it, uh, so knowledge of this elimination procedure predates him by many centuries, obviously. Uh, but um, but somehow his name got attached to it anyway, even though he already has his name attached to many things. Um, the irony is that my advisor refused to have one of his own algorithms named after him, um, but that all changed after after he passed away. So I've invented methods, and I don't have them named after me either. Um, maybe somebody will accidentally name something after me. <clears throat> that I didn't invent. Um, OK, so what exactly is the um, algorithm? I will carry it out on this system here. Um, so, you, um, so you go from left to right, first column second column, and so on. Um, so in each column, and I'll refer to it as column J, so you find a multiple of row J to add to each row below it. Um, Um, to eliminate that unknown xj from equation i. So in other words, each equation only depends on unknowns with the same index or after it. Um, so that way, the last equation will depend on only one unknown and therefore can easily be solved. And then you can substitute going up for the equations to the very beginning and solve everything. OK, so what I'm going to do now is um, illustrate this systematic elimination procedure on this system right here. And then we'll see larger systems later. So I need to perform a row operation um, to eliminate x1 from equation number two. Um, so any equation cannot have unknowns with a lesser index. Um, so what, what, what I do in this case, um, basically I want to have these terms cancel out. So the row operation, this is a shorthand that I'll use. Row two is equal to itself minus twice row one. Um, so I'm going to take this row, double it, subtract it from this row. And we can see why, because if I double this row, I'll have 2x1 plus 8x2 is equal to 20. And then I subtract it from this equation, the 2x1s will cancel out. So then. We'll see the result of that. OK, um, so this is what happens from that elimination uh, procedure. So the first row itself not changed. Only the second row is changed. Um, and these terms canceled out. Here I have 7x2 minus twice this. So minus 8x2 gives me minus 1 times x2. And then performing the same operation on the right side gives me um, minus four. Now, um, does anyone have any questions up to this point? And be sure to unmute yourself if you do.
Okay, so once we've done that, um, then certainly we can just negate both sides of the last equation. We have x2 um, being 4. So now we can take that value of x2 uh, being 4 and substitute that in here. Um, so now I can solve this equation, the first equation, uh, to get x1 from that substitution, and we end up with uh, minus 6. Uh, so then we have our final answer, x1 is minus 6, and then x2 is equal to 4. <clears throat> okay. So here we have an instance of a uh, simple case of gas elimination to um, take a multiple of one row and subtract it from another um, to eliminate one of the variables from that second equation. So now, that we've been exposed to this procedure, let's use it here on this system. So same idea that we want to eliminate x1 from the second equation. So we want to perform a row operation again um, to eliminate x1 from equation uh, number two. Um, okay, so, so the thing is, if I'm going to take this row and add or subtract from it, I like to figure of subtraction because it seems to be easier to figure out what to do. Um, a multiple of this row to be subtracted from this row, um, what should I multiply this by? So, um, unmute yourself and tell me, somebody. Three. The audio dropped out a little bit. Again. Three over seven. Yes, three sevens. Okay, so that's the um, row operation to be performed here. Um, now, um, so what do you do is, in general, um, subtract uh, type uh, typos. Um, M times rho j from rho i, where M is equal to um, this fraction So the numerator is going to be um, So here, I want to get rid of this free x1. So the 3 is what goes in the numerator. The denominator is okay. coefficient from the equation used for elimination. So if I'm using this term to eliminate this one, then my uh, coefficients will be so my multiple of this row is going to be um, this is being eliminated over this is doing the eliminating. So three sevens in this case. So what happens? When I do that, uh, so x1 has been eliminated. So now the last equation depends uh, only on x2. Um, so when I took 14, times 3 over 7, um, that gives me uh, 6x2, because uh, 14 times 3 sevens is 6. Uh, so then I have 5x2 minus 6x2 is minus um, x2. And then I perform the same operation on the right side, and this, that's why I have a 4 uh, right here. So that immediately reveals uh, x2. 
And then I can take that value of x2, which is minus 4, substitute that into the first equation. Um, so then I have, so I'm moving this term to the other side, uh, then dividing by 7, and working all that out, and I get uh, 9 uh, for final result. Okay. Now, this next problem is more about uh, possible interpretation of a uh, solution of a system of linear equations. So here we have two equations that describe a line in the x1, x2 plane. You can think of x1 as x and x2 as y, um, if you like. Um, so, so here we have two lines in the plane, and we want to know, do they cross? Is, uh, do they have a point of uh, uh, intersection? And uh, so another way of looking at it is, um, a point if it, of intersection, if it exists, must satisfy the equations of both lines. So we have this system. Oh, typo. Uh, so the system of linear equations is solved um, much like the uh, previous two. So then we can carry out the same um, elimination procedure. So in this case, since the um, uh, both term, both equations start with an x1, we can just subtract these rows from one another. So row two is equal to itself minus r1. So that's going to cancel out the x1s. And once again, so this system is again an upper triangular form. So if we look at the non-zero coefficients um, that they form a triangle. Uh, occupying the upper half of the whole space that was uh, set aside for the system of equations to begin with. Um, so now, once again, the second equation can immediately be solved for um, x2, and then we carry out back substitution, substitute this value of x2 in here, um, and we find that because the, solution, the system can be solved, there is an intersection point, so the, the point uh, 1, 2 satisfies both of these equations. As we could also see if um, we were to rewrite these equations in um, y equals mx plus b form, uh, we would see that they have different slopes. Um, so for that reason, they have a uh, uh, point of intersection. But this is how we go about finding it. Now here we have um, moving up to three equations, so there's going to be more row operations involved, um, but the same procedure. So we would use row operations like before to eliminate x1 from the last two equations. And then um, after that, we want to eliminate x2 from the third equation. And that's going to give us this upper triangular form where we can um, go ahead and solve the equations. So as far as row operations are concerned, so we want to subtract a multiple of this row from this row. So it's going to be the um, coefficient we're eliminating, which is the minus 6 divided by the coefficient from the equation we're using to do the eliminating, which is one in this case. So, so a multiple of the first row is going to be minus six. We're subtracting minus six times row one from row two, but, uh, but minus and minus gives us a plus, so we have row two is equal to itself plus six times the first row. And we see what that does to the system. So that one uh, entry uh, from a second equation has been um, removed. Third equation, we haven't done anything to that yet, uh, but the rest of the second equation is updated as a result of uh, taking six times these terms 
and adding to this portion of a row down here. Okay. So now we want to continue and we want to um, get rid of this. So, um, so what do I need to multiply this row by to get rid of that? What, 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 what multiplier should I use? Anyone? Three. Three. Um, yeah, so we're going to add three um, times the first row to the third row. Okay, so you look at it either way. That um, I look at the ratio of these, and I get minus three. I want to subtract that, but that's the same as adding uh, three times the first row. Okay, so then you go ahead and carry that out. And we see we're, we're getting closer to an upper triangular form because now this first column is empty, except for this X1 right here, which is something we want to keep. Uh, but we have one more entry to eliminate. It's this one. So what multiple of this row? So, so I'm done with the first row. I'm done, I'm done using it for anything because all the X1s are gone. To get rid of any X2s that I want there, that's this one. What multiple of this row do I subtract from this one? Oh. But anyway, I didn't have, uh, since I've been focusing my notes, I didn't see the chat, but I got notified on my phone. Um, so, yes, that is the correct answer, five. Um, okay, so I need to go into a new page here. All right, so row three is equal to itself minus five times row two. OK, um, so now the system has been reduced to um, upper triangular form. Um, so you think of these entries down here, the x1, the 3x2, and the 0 as being like the di main diagonal. That's actually what it's called in, when, when it's written in matrix form. So everything below this main diagonal, like below and to the left, is gone. Um, so that's what I mean by upper triangular form that we're going for. That's the goal of this systematic elimination procedure or Gaussian el elimination. Um, but now we have a problem because you know, the solution of this system is the same as the solution of the original system, but we have this equation here, zero equals 19, that cannot be solved. Um, so this, um, so, so this whole system, of equations uh, does not have a solution. Um, okay. So another way of putting it is is the inconsistent um, system of equations, and you can kind of see that uh, from up here. Like if I look at these two equations, um, if I take this second equation and multiply it by five, both sides. I'll have 15x2 minus 20x3 is equal to 15. So in that case, the second and third equations have the same left sides, 15x2 minus 20x3, but different right sides. They both cannot be satisfied simultaneously. We must satisfy all equations. That just isn't possible. So that, that's something that can happen. Um, from a system of linear equations. Um, so a way to look at this geometrically is, let's see if it's mentioned here. I think it is in the later problem. Each one of these equations, so this equation right here, describes a plane in um, 
three dimensional space, just as if I had like AX1 plus BX2 equals C, that describes a line in two dimensional space. So here we have uh, three planes. Now the planes, if they're not parallel, will intersect each other, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they'll have a point in common. So, um, so these three planes do not have a point in common. So geometrically, that's what this is saying. All right, now, um, here we have uh, another system of equations. Uh, we have four equations all together. So we want to carry out the same procedure. Now, thankfully, a lot of entries in this system are already zero, so that gives us less work to try to um, bring us to upper triangular forms. So like in the first column, we don't need to add a multiple, subtract a multiple of the first row from the second and third. There's nothing here. We just need to work on the last row. Um, so for example, uh, so to get started, I can say row four is equal to itself minus three, the ratio of these elements, the nine and the three times, that should be, I goof there, that should be row one, not row three. I mean, I'm using the first row to do this. So then, um, so that's what the system looks like um, after getting rid of just this one uh, entry. Only the last row is affected. Um, so by coincidence, um, well, here we have a new non-zero entry included. Uh, then we move to the second column. This entry is fine where it is. It's on the diagonal, but anything anything below equation two cannot have x2. So this entry needs to be eliminated. If we look at the ratio of coefficients, that's minus five. So in other words, row three is equal to itself plus five R2. So then we see what the system looks like. after that row operation. So now this is gone. And now we just have these two rows left. So to get upper triangular form, it's only necessary to eliminate this. So we have minus 27 over nine, that's minus three. So I'm subtracting minus three times the third row from the fourth. In other words, I am adding three times row three to R4. And Okay, so now we have this upper triangular form. So everything below, so here, the three, the one, the nine, and the minus 50, those form the main diagonal. Everything below it is zero. So, um, and when you have all of the coefficients along this diagonal, when they're all non-zero as they are here, then we know that the system uh, can be solved. Um, okay, so, so in other words, we could say that this system um, is consistent. Um, so there are actually three possibilities when it comes to any system of linear equations. Um, Um, so, so you could have a unique solution, uh, which is what happens um, in this case. And that is an example of a um, consistent system. You can also have a system that's consistent and there are infinitely many uh, solutions. So. Suppose when I had been carrying out the systematic elimination, if my last row turned out to be zero equals zero, then this system of equations would have infinitely many uh, solutions. Okay. Um, 
And then you have an a third possibility is an inconsistent system. Oh. Sorry, I spilled over to a new page. So an inconsistent system has uh, no solution. So that's what happened in a previous problem where after eliminating an equation of a form zero equals 19. Uh, so any contradiction like that, you know, the system is inconsistent. So it may happen when um, when you're carrying out the elimination, you might have a situation where an entire row on the um, left side is uh, zero. Um, so if you also have zero on the right side, then that points to having uh, at least a solution. At least the system remains consistent. But if you have all zeros in a, an equation on the left side and something non-zero on the right side, that's an inconsistent uh, system. All right, so that's the easiest way to spot that. <clears throat> All right. Questions up to this point? All right. Now, um, here we have uh, equations that describe lines in the x1, x2 plane, and we want to know if they have an intersection. So if we think of this as a system of equations to solve, we have three equations and two unknowns. So this system is overdetermined. An overdetermined system most of the time will not have a solution. Uh, but although it certainly can. Um, so, so this is what we have to find out by carrying out elimination. So what's going to happen is um, when we perform elimination, there's guaranteed to be a row of zeros on the left side. Um, so if we have like zeros down here in this last equation. Um, if it's also zero on the right side, we still have a solution. Otherwise, it's inconsistent. So we just have to carry out elimination like before and find out. So for instance, all these x1s um, have to be eliminated. Um, so I'm going to look at the ratio of these coefficients. So 4 over 2 gives us 2. I'm going to take twice the first row Subtract from the second. Okay. So we see what that does. Okay, so that part's eliminated. And then I'm just going to take these rows and add them together to eliminate that uh, minus 2x1 down below. and see what we get. Um, so notice that the second and third equations are very closely related. One is just a negative of the other. So what I can do is I can cancel. I'll just uh, form one more row operation, add the second row to the third row, and that's just going to cancel out everything. So sure enough, we have 0 equals 0 as our last equation. So if we look at just the first two rows, we know we can solve this system. Um, third equation doesn't change that. So in fact, this whole system of equations does have a solution. We can say that the system um, is consistent. Also, the solution will be unique. Whereas if we had zero equals something else, then we could say that those two lines, those three lines do not have 
a uh, point of intersection. The, the system would be inconsistent in that case. So we do have oh, homework problems asking, is there at least one common point? Yes, it turns out there will be exactly one because this system of equations would have only one solution. But then we could try the same thing when we have three planes. Um, so is there a point x1, x2, x3 in three-dimensional space that satisfies the equation for all three of these planes? So if we write this as a system of equations, that's this system to solve. And I've written in such a way as to line up all the variables. Um, Okay. Um, so then I perform the same elimination procedure. I look at the coefficients. I'm going to take twice the first row, subtract it from the second. So R3 is itself minus twice row one. Okay, I'm going to move this to a new page. OK, um, so now those are eliminated. Uh, then I move to the second column. Um, so these two are fine. I need to eliminate this entry x2 in the third equation. So remember, you're always eliminating xj from x i from equation i when i is greater than j. Um, so row 3 is equal to itself. Um, for convenience, I don't absolutely have to do this, but <coughs> I can see that this equation is double this one in terms of a coefficient, so I'll just cut it in half. So now we see this actually can tell us right away that uh, the system is inconsistent because we have the same left side, different right sides. But if I carry through the elimination to its end, um, so I just subtract the last two rows. Then I have zero on the left side, something non-zero on the right side. That's a dead giveaway. The system is upper triangular form, but it cannot be solved because this equation certainly can't be satisfied. So what that means is these three planes, though well, they may intersect, uh, they do not intersect at a common point. Now, here, we're using the same row operations, but now we're looking at this in matrix form, which is something we'll get a lot into a lot more um, on uh, Wednesday. So the idea is, if we notice here, this entry four is eliminated in this matrix. So I want to perform a row operation on this matrix that will eliminate the four. So if I, so once again, I look at the ratio of coefficients, which is four. And I'm going to subtract that ratio four times the first row from the second. But my notation here, I'm using tilde to refer to the updated row. So R2 is the original second row. R2 tilde is the updated second row. So then I go ahead and see what I get. And sure enough, this matrix does match uh, this one. Um, so that is a row operation that transforms this matrix into this one. But now it says, the problem asks for, finding the reverse row operation that transformed this matrix back into the first. So you want to undo. Well, all you had to do in this case is you just have to rearrange this equation. Isolate R2 is in the original second row. So if I just go ahead and rearrange that equation, I'm just moving this term to the other side. So, so reversing a row operation of this kind, where you're taking a multiple of one row and adding it or subtracting it from another, you just flip the sign. That's all it takes. Um, and that will 
reverse a row operation. Um, so, so in this case, uh, so transform this to this. Um, you add minus four times the first row to the second uh, to go back. You replace row two if it's with uh, plus four times the first row, add it to the second. And it'll be easier to see why it works that way when we get to um, the inverse of a matrix um, sometime later in, this, in, in, the, in the semester. Yeah. <clears throat> OK. Um, but this is what you'll be doing quite a bit of, is performing this um, Gaussian elimination procedure to rewrite systems of equations in a form where either they can easily be solved or it can easily be determined that there's not a solution. So, um, so this is uh, your tour of the uh, uh, first homework assignments from uh, section 1.1. 1 .1. um, so I'm going to uh, take these notes that I've just been typing in and I will uh, post these um, in Canvas. Um, Along with a link to a re recording this, of this uh, of this class meeting. Um, so, does anyone have any questions at this point? Okay. So someone says no questions here. Um, we all seem to be a very quiet bunch. Um, although in 11 years of teaching at USM, I've become used to that. Um, OK, um, but. Um, can't argue with you there. <laughs> um, OK, and yes, it does feel that way on my side too. Um, right. <clears throat> OK, now, um, but that's why it's important that um, uh, if, if anyone has any difficulties, first of all, in this early part of the semester with um, getting access, I know some of you have, and I'll try to work with uh, Pearson as needed to uh, make sure that um, everybody's in. Um, and uh, hopefully within you know, a few days, uh, all 37 of you will be. Um, and then um, if you have any uh, difficulties with the uh, um, problems themselves, definitely reach out to me um, and uh, we'll get that handled too. So, um, but yeah, un unfortunately, this is uh, um, a world we're having, we're having to teach and learn in, even though it's uh, and the, the, the thing is, if uh, this was uh, in normal times, for example, even at the start of spring, um, when I was teaching uh, Math 285 and I was showing up to a classroom in LAB um, and writing on the board, um, you know, you'd, you'd think that the uh, brain power for doing that versus what I'm doing here would be about the same, but for some reason, everything. Uh, I think uh, certainly on the teaching side, and I imagine from a student side as well, uh, just this seems more taxing um, when it, when it's uh, uh, virtual. Um, and uh, and, it's, and then certainly the, uh, the, the, the preparation time um, is, is also more. And uh, on top of that, because uh, as a consequence of uh, the, the pandemic, um, from a uh, teaching standpoint, we as a math department are also uh, short staffed. Um, so uh, every single faculty member in math is uh, having to teach more classes. <laughs> so um, that also take more time. So. Um, and at the same time, um, you know, all this started 
um, roughly five months ago, but it probably feels like five years have passed. Um, so, um, but, but what I can tell you is that uh, even though this is not a uh, uh, mode of operation that uh, any of us wanted, um, that uh, you know, my goal is still to, you know, to deliver the same kind of uh, guidance and assistance that I would, no matter how I was operating. Um, so, uh, but but uh, one thing it doesn't matter whether it's um, in person or virtual, that um, that communication is very important. Um, so be sure to keep that up when you are having difficulties, and uh, and we'll all get through the semester one way or another. So, um, okay, so. Um, so I will so, so so watch it in in Canvas. Um, I think I'm going to unshare this and come on. Everything's also compounded by certain things not working well, um, technology wise. If I go to Canvas. OK, so uh, so one thing I'd, I recommend making a habit of is uh, so you see here, uh, this is where you went to uh, join this meeting in the first place. So after class, it may not be right away because I'm going to have a class uh, coming up at 4 o'clock. Um, I will um, edit this item uh, to have um, a link to this video in uh, Microsoft Stream. Um, I'll see if I can also post a video in YouTube in case that might be easier for you to access. Although that will take some time because of uploading. Um, and I will also post uh, uh, the notes that I was just typing in. So all that will be here. That's going to happen after um, every class. All right. So um, I guess what I would, similar to what I would normally do. Um, uh, in a class if it was in person, I'm going to uh, I'm going to dismiss class now. But anyone who um, uh, has a question, um, they're, they're, well, I'm going to leave this open for a few minutes um, uh, until I have to uh, get ready for my uh, next class at four. Uh, let me unshare that. Um, so I'll stick around a little bit for that, but. Um, but uh, everyone else is free to go. And I'm also going to uh, stop the recording.